This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. Talking Heads with Naughty is sponsored by the Bahamas Out Island Promotion Board, BTC, Burger King, the Cancer Treatment Centers of America, the Cleveland Clinic, Dunkin' Donuts, Fidelity Bank Bahamas, Fine Threads, the Jeff Rogers Basketball Camp, John's Department Store, J.S. Johnson, Joker's Wild, KFC, Naughty Johnny's, the Pan American Health Organization, and Tropical Gyros. Bare heels, so throw on your boots. The game camouflages like army suits, but I can see it more clear because I came with the coop in here. Ring the alarm and form the troops. Send them out into the world, go to war on the flu. Out of eye with the enemy, you sworn to shoot. Now I'm coming at your neck, sick of hearing something wrong with me. Wrong with you. When the cheap just way too smart to question. Once again, it's on the uh, Monday edition of Talking Heads right here on Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Your boy Naughty in your company right up until 6 p.m. on this wet Monday. It's wet outside, the rain's coming down, please proceed with caution and care, all right? I don't want to sound cliche, but I want to get it out there on the commute to work today. So a lot of craziness going on on the wet roads. Still a lot of people on the sidewalks getting, you know, splashed because people just fly through the puddles. Slow down. Take a couple of minutes, be a little considerate, consider what's going on, and, and, and proceed, you know, cautiously and, and be aware, all right? You don't have to be flying at 500 miles an hour to get where you're going. It's not the conch 500, all right? And it is water, and it is wet out there, so that, that is not a good recipe right now, all right? So, like I said, as you get on and about out there, do it with a little caution, do it with a little care. Stop betting up the people on the sidewalks, all right? All right. Now, if you can chime in today, you know we got to get in, and you know we got to start it right. Some Monday, coming in off the weekend, some of y'all have been to Crab Fest, I seen you on Facebook. I seen you on social media. We ain't gonna talk your business. We ain't gonna talk it. Some of y'all wrong. Some for the outfits. Some for the way y'all was carrying on. And some of them for, for how much crab y'all ate. Y'all ate a lot of crab, boy. I ain't gonna lie. I mean, how many different pictures of crab and rice you could show off? Crab and rice look like crab and rice. Anyway, I digress. Let's start it off. And of course, you know, we're going to start it off with our mind-bending brain teaser. So you know how to chime in, 323-6232, 325-4259. Those lines are working and firing up. 323-6232, 325-4259. Text lines powered by BTC, 422-GR96. That's 422-4796. Take us wherever you want to go. We're streaming live, guardiantalkradio.com. That's guardiantalkradio.com. Cable channel 969, BTC Flow channel 612, all right? And of course, like I said, fully loaded show today. We'll be talking with Abaco in short order. We'll be getting to uh, Mr. Ken Hutton and Mr. Roscoe Thompson, and they'll be bringing us up to snuff as they do each, every two weeks, what's going on or what's not going on in Abaco. So that'll be coming up in short order. They'll be taking that Dunkin' Donuts coffee break with me. But before we get to that, and don't forget that in the sports portion, 5 o'clock hour, be talking with Keishno Major, all right? We're talking boxing, all right? We'll be joined by Peter Rahim, probably in studio, or the Pearl via the Zoom. So like I said, we got a fully loaded show, lots to talk about today. So we're going to get it started with that brain teaser. Up for grabs, Joker's Wild Party Passes. Great show over there at the Joker's Wild. Headliner, Mike Rivera, America's Funniest Teacher. All right, you know him from The View. Vien Parmesan. One of the funniest Filipinos I know. Very funny individual. Actual doctor as well. So come get some highbrow humor right there. And you guys, truly great lineup. Funny show from start to finish. Two for one on all locals, all right? And we run Tuesday through Sunday. Doors open at 8. Showtime is at 9. And we're located between the Carl and the Beach Tower over there at the beautiful Atlantis. All right? So definitely take advantage of that. All you need is your Vax card or your rapid antigen test. You're good to go for the show. And that two for one on all locals, great deal. Come get your laugh on, all right? Playing for Joker's Wild Party Passes. Here's your mind-bending brain teaser. You know how to get your answers in. You know how to get it in. You know how to get it on. Here we go. All right. And I, I wonder how hard I should make you work. It's Monday. You're coming in off the weekend. You're coming in off Crab Fest. 
Should I make the brain like work right away or should I be easing into it? Mm, easing into it. Let's jump right in the deep end today. All right. <laughs> so here we go. Here's your question. Wow. Millennials, 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 millennials. My God. Recent survey. 100 Bahamian women between the ages of 18 and 25. 12% said they have never, ever cooked one of these for a family dinner. What is it? That is your mind-bending brain teaser. I mean, you hear it, you just can shake your head. Where are we going as a society? We are young ladies between 18 and 25. We don't come in. You all don't know how to cook one of these? Really? My God. You know how to get your answers in. First one to get it in and correct, you're going to win Joker's Wild Party Passes. Real easy. Chicken is too easy. Look at the percentage, people. Come on. If it's 12%, it's not going to be an item like a chicken. A chicken is way more popular than 12%. I think we've had more than 12% of those young ladies know how to cook a chicken. That's the national meal of the Bahamas. That's the na- that should be the national bird or, or tied right after the flamingo. Okay? So not a chicken. All right? Not a turkey. That was going to be my guess was turkey. But anyway, I'll let you all chime it in. Hey, what, what, what we got going on with this phone today? But this phone vibrating like crazy. Hard boy leg. You trying to be funny, eh? <laughs> Anyhow, while you all chime in, we'll check out uh, the headliners. Who was making headlines in the 242 was blazing up the pages of the Nassau Guardian News and Views in Madison's 1844. All brought to you by Fine Threads. And don't forget, Fine Threads got a great deal going on for you right now. You definitely want to check that out. Purchase any full price denim jeans or jeans set, and you're going to get the next one of equal or lesser value absolutely free. All right? You heard me right. For every full price denim jeans purchase, you're going to get the next one of equal or lesser value absolutely free. Also, if you buy one full price men's suit or package, you're going to get half off a boy suit. So definitely take advantage of those great savings. Check out all the savings and all the great deals going on simply by logging on to findthreads.com. That's findthreads.com. Do your shopping online, as a matter of fact. Then arrange for pickup at any one of those convenient Fine Thread locations. Top of Hill Mackey Street, the flagship store, and the Southwest Shopping Plaza location. Both locations available for you Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. for your convenience. All right? So be sure to check them out or not. That's a great deal going on on the denims. And let's jump on in with your headliners. What's making headlines in the 242? Or throughout the 242? We've got lots to talk about. Lots of stuff jumping off the pages. Of the Nassau Guardian News and Views in Madison's 1844. The biggest one that scares me, time running out to save NIB. Story by Jasper Ward. The National Insurance Board, NIB, would have to increase its contribution rate by 2% next month and continue increases every two years until 2036 to ensure its financial sustainability. This is from NIB's latest actuarial report. That's what it revealed. The Nassau Guardian obtained a copy of the 11th actuarial valuation of the National Insurance Board of the Bahamas of 31th of December 2018. The report is dated January 2022. It is recommended that the con- contribution rate for the pension branch be increased immediately to a level that is at least equal to the PAYG, pay-as-you-go rate. Of course, it is, uh, the schedule of the increases should take into account the situation in the country and the government's plans and underpinned by agreements with social partners. An increase of contribution rate by 2% on July 1st, 2022, followed by increases every two years until 2036, could restore the short and medium-term financial sustainability of the scheme. Now, remember we talked about it a couple of weeks ago here on the show when it first came out. And my biggest concern was, okay, we got to save NIB. I get that. But don't give us a break now. If later on, the deductions and so on and so forth and contributions, we're going to go from 1.5, 
that's where it was going to be. Then it's going to increase. God knows what it was going to jump to. Well, let's wrap it now. They say 2%, let's go with 2%. Because God forbid we wait, and, it, and, and it, later on that, it's now 4%. And we're going to have to do this until 2036 for 14 years to bring us back to where we need to be. So we can restore the short and the medium term financial sustainability of the scheme. Now, I don't know about you all, but NIB is made up of our contributions. That's supposed to be there to take care of us. So it's very worrisome. All right, let me go to the tax lines. Naughty, the prime minister is having press briefing right now. And these dudes keep interrupting, whispering stuff in his ears. It's very annoying and unprofessional. On a real, though, the PM needs to slow down on travel and pay attention to this country. I need to get that video. Let's have a look. He must see nobody did that press conference when I was on there. If they'd have done it before and I could have checked it out and it was that crazy, we'd have done talk about that. All right, let's do this one. Naughty, uh, all well in, that's all well and good for the increase. My concern as a citizen is what's our contribution collection rate as of today? Or would it be the same persons paying the contribution while the slackers and delinquents continue to be delinquent? Good question. I'm glad you raised it before I did, but at, at some point that's going to happen and going to come into an equation and into effect. You're figuring out where the burden lies and who has fallen on. I'm looking at some of these answers for the trivia question. Recent survey of 100 Bahamian women between 18 and 25, they've admitted, 12% admitted, they've never cooked one of these before. No, not grouper, not lobster, not hard-boiled egg, not corned beef and rice, not macaroni, not pea soup, not turkey, not grits, not ham, none of that. Wow. And I'm looking, and I'm looking, and I'm looking. And boy, some of these answers are repetitive. It's all, all outdoors. Let's go to the phone lines. Talking Heads, Guardian Radio, 96.9 FM. Who's this? Hello. Hey, what's going on, Sparky? What you got for me, man? I'm good evening to you, too, my good buddy. What's happening? Uh, right here, I didn't catch the beginning of the show, trying to lock down everything, because I feel a black cloud in the north. I mean, naughty, that, that cloud out there, black, black, that, that black. That ain't gray, that ain't dark, that black. Yeah, that's ominous, that's them ominous that clouds. Made, that made some serious water coming down this evening or tonight, they say that might be it to the weather, see, or to the sea. So oh, Lord. Get, your, get your buckets ready if you want some water. Get some buckets. and get your galoshes ready and get your get your <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, I'll get you. You go, you go fast, both your little day game. Get that ready too, because you're right on the leave home without it. But you know, there, there's some things I wanted to say because I remember working the Dell Tech banking back in the seventies when national insurance started. I think it started in 1974. At that time, and it was explained to us what national insurance was all supposed to be all about, there was a lot of people up against the Prime Minister Pillard at the time and the TLP at the time. A lot of people say they ain't taking none of their money out of their pocket to pay no national insurance, especially the private people like taxi drivers and people who's working on their own. But people like us who was working for establishments, we had to follow the law, so money was coming out of our paychecks to pay us. Well, that was one of the, the taxes mentioned earlier. Like, you know, they don't mind paying the increase. First of all, let's establish what it is, what it's going to be. And then if it's going to be spread around everybody who's making a living, or if it's just going to fall on the backs of some and, and not on the others. No, but what I'm trying to say is there's a lot of people out there complaining about this and that and the next. And a lot of them who complain about what they get, there's a lot of them out there who never even contributed. You understand where I come from? I, I, yeah, they I, I, never I, I get you. It, but now when they get old and they, they, they wake in the morning, they're out of work, they complain about how little they get. But remember, they get something. But right. they never put nothing in the well. And people say, if you put no water in the well, don't throw no bucket. 
If you ain't put no no one hand in the AC, don't look for no draw. You understand where I'm coming from? I got you. I glad that I you take out what you put in. You put in what you take out. You know. I, look, I glad they took some money out of mine because now I'm seventy one. I I took the early retirement because they told me at the time I say if I retire if, if I do it at sixty or sixty five, what the difference was gonna make? And I had a cousin working there. He say the difference could be about forty two dollars. Which would have been like five, five more years. He say, but you don't know if you can live the next five years. So go in for the early retirement and forget the forty-two dollars. So I ended up going for the early retirement. But what hurt me was when I went to retire, and I saw what they was giving me, and I told them the places where I used to work. Naughty, let me tell you some back in the day, there were so much employers. That was taking money on the people's salary. And not paying the contributions. And not paying it. They was taking people's money, putting in fixed bikes account, and keeping the money for themselves. And I can tell you a story right now if you give me a moment. I remember working to a big-time bakery. I said a big-time bakery, so you should figure out who I'm talking about. There was a lady working there, and I was working there for over 11 years. She got pregnant. And she didn't realize that the money that was taken on her salary was not being deposited in national insurance. When she went to claim her maternity benefits, and they came back at the big time bakery, and they had they was either a woman who's going to sue the bakery, or they had to go and pay her some money. They came up with that money dead quick. Fast, so, fast. Fast, fast, because they didn't want their name to be called. But you can figure out who the big time bakery was, right? Why, Vice Parker, you got, you got all these stories. The time, the, hold on, the big time bakery is owned by some big time Bahamian businessmen. Well, I would assume that, man. If we can leave that there, that's another yeah, conversation okay, for another day. Wanted, but the last thing I wanted to say in regards to the Junkanoo over at the baseball stadium the other day. I mean, that was a beautiful rendition. And when I saw what I saw, I saw Wola coming out there in that beautiful outfit. The music was a little shabby, but I would like to say, Junkanoo is our main sport. I say sport. When I saw what I saw, I did not like it. Now, Wola was like the king. Wola was pretty in the front. But when I see fellas coming out like the horn blowers with a hat on and a little shoulder piece with a little shabby looking t shirt underneath. One fella in the crowd, like you on stage, taking off your hat and blowing the trumpet. What you put the hat on for in the first place? If you go in on stage with your regalias and your costume on, you don't take nothing off till you finish your performance. So when you travel and you rep- represent the Bahamas, especially with Junkanoo, put on your best costumes, put on your best dog on performance, and do no, do no shabby work. Especially if people got international TVs on you. There you go. But, Parky, I appreciate your contributions as always. But my phone line's blown up. I got some other callers, so I got to get to them. But I always appreciate your contributions. Talking Heads, Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Who's this? Not you. We got a winner uh, off the text lines as well to the trivia question. It, it was peas and rice. Yeah. You all are always guessing crazy. None of them made peas and rice. Amazing. Amazing. Let's go back to the text lines. Naughty. Tell Sparky that sound like teeth into me. <laughs> Ouch. Well, it ain't it ain't transparent, I'll tell you that much. You know? Anywho, anyhow, do we have this caller or talking ads, Guardian Radio 96.9 FM? Who's this? Naughty, how you doing? What's going on? You know, that really sounds the bad. great Graham Weatherford. How goes it, my brother? It's all good, man. A little rainy, but whatever. Um that sounds sad. I'd encourage every man to go to their nearest NIB and get a printout of their contribution. Check where you've worked and if they've paid. And if you feel there's a problem, report it. It's quite simple, eh? Yeah. I went and I got a copy because I figured some of them places I work wasn't doing the right thing. But they were, luckily. You know, with this NIB thing, I think we need a forensic audit. <clears throat> From That's a term you like to use often, but I think this might be the case for one now. Let's figure out what's really going from on. From the beginning. From the beginning, when it was first implemented. Let me tell you why. We have paid in mega, mega money 
Don't let me say million, billion, or trillion. We paid gargantuan amount of money. And when we needed it, remember, during COVID, the mm-hmm. long line and a few pennies, I said, where's all our money gone? Well, it's invested. I think I heard before your show from the much more most honorable Shavargo Lang. But I need to know what you invested my money in. Hold on, much more honorable? Much more honorable than who? I don't know. Than me? Are you trying to make an inflection now? What kind of reference is that? Use the most dishonorable. Oh, all right. We're giving extra titles now. For real. watch this. (laughs) What did you invest my money in? See, that would come up in a forensic audit. Did you put my money into some fast food chain? Did you put my money into building some buildings? That we've seen crumbled where, and bulldozed. Where it gone? Yeah. Once. Where is it yeah. gone? Yes, because naughty. If you would have taken my money and invested it in gold, silver, and it grew, I can understand. Or in your that. case, Bitcoin. Well, I didn't want to say that. Yeah, but, but I know you was gonna go there, so I, I did before you. But yeah, I get where you're well, going you know, with this. Experts, experts are saying we should have put five percent in Bitcoin, and we'd have had plenty of money to give you. But watch, where did our before you start saying you want to tax me more? Tell me what you're gonna do with my NIB money. What future investments do you uh, think you may throw my money behind? If, you, if you're going to build it. Because you got me with the increase now. We got to see where it's going. So obviously we know that's coming now. What you going to do with it when you get it this go round? I totally well, agree. Yeah, you can't just take our money. That's like, Naughty, give me some money. I can do something with it. Don't worry, bro. I mean, no. you have to be, you have no, to be ridiculous. You gotta, it's not, I'm not blaming anyone government. I'm saying from the beginning to now, let's find out what every government has invested our NIB money in because I'll pay to publish it one page, bam, right there in the, in the Guardian so we could see, well, we invested in maybe a, a building and the building's now being bulldozed. So that couldn't make you any money. See, you invest in things that make you more money so you'll have extra money to pay your people and you wouldn't have to tax them more. There you go. You got anyway, you know to get more visionary. We got to have more vision than just a quick to tax routine. Let's get another one. Let me leave you with this one, Naughty. I challenge every person in this government or the last government to call Naughty Show and to tell us how we could fix NIB without putting up the tax. How could we lower the percentage that you pay in NIB because these tough times, right? I bet you $100. I bet you a chicken in the bag. Nobody has called you and tell you one suggestion. I just say, ain't nobody going to go even call it that one. But anyway, we'll see. Yeah. Thanks for your chiming <laughs> in, Graham. Always appreciate yeah. you, bro. Be safe. All right, let's slide up into the buzz real quick. All brought to you, of course, by John Shoes. That's a wrap right there on your headline. It's who's making headlines in the 242. All brought to you, of course, by Fine Threads. The buzz real quick. We got to slide in, and it's brought to you by John's. And don't forget, in addition to new arrivals every Monday, ladies, go check them out. All right? Wide selection for the ladies. Wide selection for the men. Full selection for the kids. They now have, and all your workwear and fast fashions, don't forget that, and all the accessories to go along with. They now have small home appliances and cookware as well at both John's locations. So be sure to check them out, John's Plaza Carmichael, flagship store over there on Rosetta today. And remember, John's serving you is a pleasure. Now listen, real quick, two things I got to get into has got me buzzing. Please, we already addressed this on the show. The, 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 the indiscriminate sharing of viral videos is ridiculous, especially the morbid, morose ones with dead people. And, 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 and victims of crime and, and obviously murder victims. Now there's one circulating with a poor, innocent baby being what appears to be suffocated with a plastic bag. Are, are, are we, are, where we reach a society where we're sharing this type of crap? My God, do we have monsters and demons that prey on our children and would commit such atrocities. But why would you share it? And I get some of you jump out, but they need to get out there so the police can get. There's other ways to get it to the police if you're that interested and you care so much. We need to stop this. It's got me buzzing. We need to stop this, this senseless, sensational promotion of, of, of the morbid, of the morose, of the dead, for lack of a better word. We have to be, stop being so enthralled and infatuated with it. It's disgusting. No sensitivity for the victim. No sensitivity for the family. And then none for society, because who says everybody wants to see that type of crap? I tell you, a smartphone in the hands of a dum-dum, recipe for disaster. On the flip side of the break, we'll get to it. 
We'll get into your global warming, all brought to you, of course, by KFC Nassau. And then we'll take our Dunkin' Donuts coffee break. We'll chime in with Abaco. Mr. Ken Hutton and Mr. Roscoe Thompson will be chiming in. We'll be getting caught up. And as I get out of the buzz, all brought to you, of course, by John Shoes. Listen, got some calls in from security officers throughout the 242. They applaud my campaign. They're getting you knuckleheaded, denied oxygen in the womb. People who park and handicap parking out of the spaces. But now I'm being told that they got to block up the spaces because people continue to abuse it. So guess what we're going to do? We're going to take some more pictures. And now I can get some of my record driver friends involved who don't like jabronis like you are parking and handicap parking. And we're going to get you all where you all need to be, out of the blue. Mm-hmm. And maybe put, you know, your pocket into the red. So you got to pay some money for being so dumb. Stay out of the handicap parking, people. Let your conscience be your guide. Oh, no, you're wrong. Take me to the break, Mr. Produce. On the flip side of the break, we're going to heat it up. Right here on Talking Ads, Guardian Radio, 96.9 FM. Don't touch it. Get ready for more iced coffee temptations at Dunkin'. More delectable aromas and more exciting flavors so you can get more refreshment from every cup. Enjoy the flavors of butter roasted pecans and sweet cream combined with Dunkin' Original Blend Iced Coffee. Or try our cake batter signature latte combining smooth, rich espresso with a spoon-licking good cake batter flavor topped with whipped cream, mocha drizzle, and rainbow sprinkles for a party in every cup. The Bahamas runs on Dunkin'. George, Shoes and Accessories is your one-stop shop for all your footwear needs. Whatever the occasion, John's is confident you will find what you're looking for. Among our always growing collection of amazing and trendy stuff. We cover women, men, children, the whole family. Together with John's great prices and helpful and friendly customer service, your experience in shopping with us will be time well spent. Too busy to come in store? Shop with us online. www.johnshoes.com John's also now carries small home appliances. So come on in today at John's. Where we put fashion at your feet. When I had got prostate cancer, my family didn't know if I was going to live at Cancer Treatment Center Central America. Within days, I got an appointment. They presented me with treatment options, and they set up a robotic prostatectomy. When my scans came back, there are no signs of cancer. They don't see you as a number, they see you as a part of the family. I'm going on with my life. That's a real gift. Call us at Cancer Treatment Centers of America. Need to satisfy your late night munchies? KFC drive throughs are open and frying until midnight every night of the week. Whether you're craving juicy KFC chicken, fries and biscuit, or one of our signature KFC sandwiches, we've got you covered with 100% KFC flavor. Catch some late night vibes and take a ride to your neighborhood KFC for after dark satisfaction. Last call to get fueled by KFC fried chicken is midnight. Late Night Cravings at KFC Nassau. It's finger licking good. We're back at you right here talking heads. Guardian Radio 96.9 FM and as we continue, we got to get up into your global warming. All brought to you, of course, by KFC Nassau. And don't forget, the drive throughs at KFC open until midnight, Monday through Sunday, open and frying until midnight. All right, now you have more time to satisfy those late-night cravings for KFC chicken every night of the week. Last call to get fueled by fried chicken is midnight. KFC Nassau, it's always finger-licking good. And don't forget, it's all about Crazy Tuesdays tomorrow. Definitely want to check them out. Great deals popping at KFC on Crazy Tuesdays. All right? Yeah, man. Tuesdays is crazy wild good. You get eight pieces of chicken for the wild price of only $15, all right? Don't forget that each and every Tuesday over there at your favorite KFC location. And, of course, drive throughs open and frying until midnight, so no excuse for you. Get on out there to your favorite KFC location for takeout, drive through and delivery. Let the colonel do the cooking for you today because, you know, it's always finger looking good. All right, real quick. I'll we'll seating up the planet in 60 seconds or less. All brought to you, of course, by KFC Nassau. Where do we start? Lots to talk about. Yeah. When Charlie Sheen and Denise Richards' daughter Sammy started her OnlyFans account, Charlie went crazy. Come on, Charlie. Come on. What did you expect? Look who our parents are. He blamed Denise. She blamed Charlie. And now to show Charlie there's nothing wrong with it, 
she started her own OnlyFans account. Well, you know, Denise was coming with that, not to be outdone. You know? <laughs> and now the reality show will probably follow that up too. Perfect replacement for the Kardashians. Amazon is developing a voice mimicking feature for its virtual assistant Alexa that replicates the speech of people alive and dead, joining other companies that are experimenting with creating digital memories of people after death. Listen, man. Listen, Amazon M. Eh? Four way look here. <laughs> they really try to play God sometimes, you know. Or really freak people out, one and the same, one and the two. California Governor Gavin Newsom is making noises that he could be the uh, right replacement for Joe Biden in a couple of years. How about like right now? Pink Floyd has announced that their benefit song for Ukraine, Hey, Hey, Rise Up, their first new song in 25 years, will be available on both a 7-inch vinyl and on CD on July 15th in the UK, Europe, and other markets on August 3rd in Japan. Amazon Prime has a new show that's getting some buzz, The One That Got Away where people who dated years ago are reunited to see if the spark is still there. That's a recipe for disaster right there. Somebody going to catch some bad feelings or bad memories or something ain't going to wake out. Yeah, that's going to get ugly. Sharon Stone revealed that she has lost nine children to miscarriages over the years. Wow, Sharon. I'm so sorry for that. I didn't even know you went through all of that. And that's pretty much it. That's a wrap right there. On your global warming, we've seen them the planet in 60 seconds or less. All brought to you, of course, by KFC Nassau. Now slide up into my Dunkin' Donuts coffee break. And, of course, you know, getting ready to take that Dunkin' Donuts coffee break with me, checking in with Abaco, bringing me up the stuff with all this going on down there in Abaco. I got Mr. Roscoe Thompson and Mr. Ken Hunton chiming in. And, of course, got to remind you before I get to them, Dunkin's new tomato pesto grilled cheese sandwich features oven-roasted tomatoes, pesto spread, and white cheddar on toasted sourdough bread for flavors that are bold and bright, and just pop in your mouth. Tomato pesto perfection at Dunkin' is waiting on you. Be sure to try it. It's available for you at all your locations with your favorite coffees, hot or cold, and your favorite donuts, all right? Downtown Bay Street, Paradise Island, Palmdale, Bernard Road with the drive through East Street South with the drive through Carmichael, the newest location, and the two out there at the airport, pre-clearance and post-clearance. Let's go to Abaco. Roscoe, Ken, how are you, gents? What's going on? It's been two weeks. What's happening? What's going on? Have things changed or are they remain the same? Um, what do you think? Well, I was trying to be optimistic. I was hoping that you might have said, well, guess what, Naughty? We got three layers of red tape cut down and so on and so forth. Or we might have a few blocks thrown on the foundation of what should be the hurricane shelter. I don't know. I was uh, hoping. It's not raining here. Hey, it's raining here, so, you know, you got rain, you don't have rain, so, you know, that's good, I guess. I, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm here in Nassau, obviously, it's picked up steam now. People follow the show. People follow the conversation. They know every Tuesday we chime in with Freeport. They know every two weeks we chime in with Abaco. And every week, or everywhere I go, people, what's up with Abaco, Naughty? I, I can't believe it. nothing's really been done. And now I got other people chiming and saying, Naughty, that's only certain parts of Abaco. You got other parts of Abaco things getting done. It's a new day. So, I mean, what the, tell I, me, I, bring me up the stuff. What areas are those? Well, let me know. <laughs> uh, only areas I could think of is maybe the Keys might be doing a little better than the mainland. But, you know, that's because of the second homeowner base. See, my biggest thing is we started this like two months ago. And Longer God knows, I, I appreciate your contributions. We love hearing from you, but I wish we could be talking about other things when we hear from Abaco. Like, we're moving in the right direction. Businesses are getting back up. People are coming back home. You know, we got the hurricane shelter completed. Let's follow those stories. We can't get to them because now we're spending all years in the mud. And we're stuck. So... It's frustrating, and especially for folks here who have an interest in Abaco, but don't live there. So we could only imagine how much more pertinent it is to you guys who live there. And New the, day, man. What you expect? And the limp service is getting, you know, long and, 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 and cumbersome and tiresome. And we've heard it from the past administration, and we've heard it from this previous administration. There's yeah, a lot of beating up of the gums, but a lot of talk and no action. 
But let's go there, Naughty. We, we talk about this new administration, a new day, you know, but what what what's really going on? What have you, you know, let me ask you this question. What have you been hearing about Albuco and Nassau? I mean, what I've been hearing for the most part is the same thing that I hear every two weeks from you guys on the show. There's nothing happening. It's not changing. Too much red tape. I want to go back home, but too much, and I can't use some of the words that they tell me is going on, but that's why they can't leave. And, well, and, you, and, need come up, you need to come up here and do a show, and let me take you out to the airport terminal and show you how some of our urinals aren't even functional. Uh, water. You know, you you would be you would be shocked. I mean, that that's just getting into some of it. Um, you know, now these new subdivisions that four nationals have put up, uh, they got chains across the entranceway. You can't get down there after a certain time at night. So they literal gated communities, I guess. Well, I said chain. I didn't say gated. But okay, chain. yeah, but you chain something, you got to be a gate, right? You got to be a fence. What you chaining? You can't chain <laughs> air. You know, but it, it, that's the thing that I, I keep asking, you know, and it, it gets so frustrating. And I get, I know Ken, Ken has the same frustration as I do. Is we keep talking about the same things over and over every two weeks, you know, and sometimes they get called on another show and it's bringing up the same the same issues. But when will the prime minister and the ministers really take a hold of what they promised Abaco and start moving with? Um, you know, the new budget is, is, is out. You're at the end of that month. July's coming. I mean, we know our budget year's at end. What are you doing? Uh, Eastern Shores is, or Pelican Shores is still not paid. Eastern Shores still does not have water. You have businesses that applied for, you know, VAT and duty free under the SERS order. Um, you know, they can't get other equipment in. They're now being told that they have to refile. I mean, it, I, it's, I've been hearing a lot of that from folks up here who are trying to get back on. And I filed paperwork. I, I put in stuff a long time. I just waiting for the approval. Now I got to refile again. So it's, it's, it's dumbfounding. I just dealt with a couple issues two weeks, a week ago. I don't even know if they got sorted out, but it was, let's it go was to, out of my hands. Let's the go to the phone real quick. Not to cut you off, Roscoe. I, I got a call. Let me see what they got to say as they chime in real quick. Talking as Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Who's this? Yes, yes, sir. That's Gardner. What's going on, man? Hey, what's going on, Gardner? Gardner, what you got for me real quick? You know, the guess, you know, we, I heard him talk about hurricane shelters, you know. You know, I, I would think that our government needs to build like some multi multi uh, purpose gymnasiums in these schools, man, and proper schools with 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 all in one with all in one building where you don't have to go into classes, to go outside to go from class to class, you know, and the like that so in, in these communities, right? Here in in Abaco and all islands and all two Nassau and communities, right? So for, for how we can tell this, you know. Yeah, that you mean that the, the multi-purpose facilities they could be used year-round, right. but obviously in the case of an emergency or, or a natural right. disaster, they right. could be converted so need, into to an ulterior uh, usage. Right. So we need to build proper schools, you know, all in one. You know what I'm saying? Plus gymnasiums, you know, high ground and things. So you know, kill two birds with one stone. You know. And then I, I would like to know what if I guess know anything about the, about the project in Long Island, this development in Long Island, where did it start? Grand land, or you know, the history of this land because they talk about thousands of acres. Well, I you think know, that's a different like, conversation. You know, Maybe we got to get some folks from Long yeah. Island to chime in on that one, Gardner. But I got more calls coming in. Okay. I know I'll hear from you in five o'clock. Good stuff as always. Yeah, okay. Talking Heads, Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Who's this? <laughs> Talking Heads, Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Who's this? Yeah, no, man, you, your phone's breaking up real bad. Try me on, on one of the other numbers 323 6232. 325-4259. Talking ads, Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Who's this? Yeah, good evening. How are you guys doing? Um, I just want to chime in real quick. Um, I have family and friends in Africa, and uh, I'm, I'm being told that the injunction as relates to uh, building is still going on. Is that a, Are they allowing everybody to build, or just a certain number of people to build in Africa as relates to... Uh, 
uh, the red tape and stuff. Uh, that's because uh, I have family and friends saying that there's a certain section of people building, um, and they, they're, they're the ones that are associated with their injunction, like they're breaching the injunction. So, yeah, if you could shed any light on that, I want to know if the injunction is holding or if there's a certain amount of people is allowed to build. I'll hang up and listen. All right, thanks so much. The, the injunction that was put in years ago, um, when Fred Smith was, was for the mud and the peas in the farm. Um, as you know, that those areas, well, the mud and the peas are no longer here. Um, the farm is, but a lot of these new communities that are popping up all over the place do not have permission, did not go through town planning, did not go through the proper regulations to do it. So in my eyes, it's illegal. Now, don't get me wrong in what I'm saying. There's a lot of Bahamians of Haitian descent and other descents that are, are living in these areas that, you know, I'm not saying government needs to provide them property, but they we need to make something affordable for all Bahamians to buy, um, to move that in that direction. We're, we're struggling here because there is a lot of red tape in regards to people that are coming back. Yes, they, they're saying that you can fill out a SERS order and still get uh, duty and VAT free on building material if you're coming back. You know, we've been petitioning the government, me and Ken, to drop VAT and duty here in Abaco for the next year and a half across the board. Come on. They, you know, it, it's, I'm getting tired of repeating it, but you know, to all the government ministers that are listening out there, fight for the people of Abaco. Give us that break. You've rode, you've rode this donkey for so long over the years. Give it to you most, know, give man. Us a ch- so you could ride it again. You know? give, give us a chance. I mean, that's what a, a economic recovery zone is about. Give us a chance to rebuild, and then you got your bread and butter. But as, as long as you continue to make it difficult on us, you know, it, it, it's we're it, it's gonna be difficult. Well, we gotta get. I mean, you, go ahead. You hear you hear the prime minister say, "Oh, they're gonna put ten percent away." You know, and I told you this the other day, Naughty. It's up to ten percent of real property tax or licensing or whatever it may be that he said it's up to that could mean two percent that could mean four percent that could mean one percent you know local government didn't get an increase in their budget like they were promised they were going to get but then you see a 4.1 million increase in travel do you know what abaco could do with 4.1 million dollars in assistance with helping people right now? Well, you all are going to tell me after the news because we're going to take a break and get to the news, but I got to pick that up with you on the flip side because that is a very interesting point. What could Abaco do with that travel uh, budget increase? And we got to talk to Ken and get some more input from him on the, 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 the re, uh, a lot of people have to, to refile, the refile. I'm, I'm getting texts right now, Naughty. Let them talk about the refile. And so I got a lot of Bahamians here, a lot, a lot of Abaconians here in Nassau that I think are trying to get back, and I think that's the biggest bit of red tape for them. And, and it boils back to what you said, because a, a lot of them share the same consensus. Look, just get the red tape out of the way. I'll do what I need to do. Just let me get back on my feet, and it is what it is. We get back to business as usual. You all just want the opportunity to make it happen, so I don't see why you ought to be in, you know, anchored down and, and, and handcuffed so much. This is crazy. So we'll pick up that conversation on the flip side of the break right here on Talking Ads, Guardian Radio, 96.9 FM. Quick commercial break, then to the news, and we'll pick it up in the 5 o'clock hour right here at Talking Heads, Monday edition. Don't touch it. Guardian Radio, 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. Move, 
If you got the nerve, lash out for your just desserts. It's not just a word. Some of y'all heads up in the cloud. I'ma bring y'all back to earth. It's black back to burn. Y'all talking about out your mouth. I'm not concerned because y'all got the nerve. It's y'all turned like Detroit Red when his head had an ultra perm. The long walk I burn your bare heels so the on your boots. The game camouflage like army suits. But I can see it more clear because I came with the coupe in here. Ring the alarm and form the troops. Send them out into the world. Go to war on the flu. Out of eye with the enemy you sworn to shoot. Now I'm coming at your neck, sick of hearing something wrong with me. Wrong with you. When the chief just way too smart to question. The enemy, the brothers of a dark complexion. We're back at you right here talking heads. Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. And I'm going to be wrapping up with Abaco in, in a couple of seconds. But listen, I got to get some of these texts that came in. Uh, Naughty Graham is uh, of the lighter hue. They would pay his NIB. Ah, <laughs> uh, boy. Naughty Sparky. I caught the tail end of Sparky. Sound like that company used to work for was transparently different. Here's another texter. I agree with Graham. We need to see what our NIB monies historically have been invested in. We the people need to see it. Lord knows, Naughty, that our people could least afford to have more taxes or more costs uh, vested or put upon their backs. Mr. Davis, please. No, 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 no. And apparently um, that's a quote coming from Mr. Davis. Y'all got to watch how y'all type, but I see what y'all mean now. And apparently that, that was Mr. Davis saying that on the uh, 3rd of February 2022 or the 2nd of March 2022, depending on how you put your date in. But yeah, that, at the end of the day, though, here's another one. Naughty, the Abaconians are trying to go back home but they meet Haitians occupying their homes and complain to the local authorities and get no results. The powers that be are not doing anything with the illegal migrants because they are hoping they would be there a long time. So the excuse would be um, that they can't move them. The injunction is not indefinite. Well, that's a great one to go right into the break on. I, I guess you guys heard that. Can you speak to that, Roscoe? Well, the injunction is, I just said that before, the injunction wasn't definite in it. And what it did is it really looked at the mud and the peas in the farm, you know, and other shanty towns that were built. All these shanty towns after the hurricane have been built. If you remember the injunction, if I'm not mistaken, it said there will be no knocking down of any old construction, but also there will be no building of new construction. So how did all this... Uh, how was this all allowed to happen? Um, not just under the previous administration's watch, but right now under uh, Wayne Monroe and Minister of Immigration and all their watches. They're, they're just continuing to allow it to happen. Well, my whole thing about it is at some point, you, you got to stop getting to the point where we're at right now, just of the beating up of the gums. We need to, to, to see some things happening. And you say you're there and you're saying it's indefinite, but you got other folks saying that it's not indefinite. I mean, we can't get into semantics right now. We need this to be rectified because if we do have Abaconians that want to get back and they're having a hard time getting back because they're, they're meeting a, a rough return, then, then we need to facilitate, you know, ease of access for Bahamians. Like how we want to ease the access for foreign investors. Let's have some ease of access for Abaconians going back home. I agree with you 100%, my brother. I, I can't I, I mean, can't argue with that. But can, we're, we're, we're not making it easy. Ken, 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 can, Ken can tell you that just as much as I can. It's it, it, even in the business, the mis business community, which is doing a lot better. But, you know, it's the problem now is finding housing, you know, over here is a big is a big issue. Well, that's what and I, I Go ahead. I do agree with one of your callers, you know, about, you know, they're looking at single family homes. Get out of that idea. Why don't you look at, you know, uh, apartments or, you know, something that people are just into renting, not to to own. You know, there's a lot of people from Ab uh, Nassau and Freeport that are over here working that just are are looking for places to rent. Teachers coming over, stuff like that. Well, at the, at, that's what I've heard. I mean, I've heard that, that there's a you know there's there's some building and stuff going on, some construction work and stuff going on in certain areas, but there's no place to house people, and and you're not getting that what I call that little construction town effect that you get, you know, because if you got a project going on, 
Then you see little businesses pop up to support it. You know, you get your barbershop, your little liquor store, your this and that, because they know that you're going to, you know, and, and you get almost like the cottage town kind of effect off of these projects. And people do make money. But at you the know, end, you at, know what we got. Okay, I'll let Ken speak. But you know what we got right now is we got traffic issues, parking issues, and traffic issues because a lot of the people are going to the Keys. You know, Guana Key to Baker's Bay or to Man of War or to Hope Town. You know, a lot of construction going on over in the Keys nonstop. Um, in Abaco here in Marsh Harbor, you know, it, it's it's not as quick. Nordy, I'll give you an example. Eastern Shores had, Ken, how many homes would you say 50? They have six homes out there now, six. Six second homeowners living on Eastern Shores, which was our biggest second home, one of our biggest second home markets. And we have six houses out there. And there were 50 before that. 50 before and now only six? Six. So what happened to the other 44? There's a no water. Of, There's no, no water. water. A lot of people are not going to invest until, you know, that they put the, get the infrastructure back out there. They're paying property tax on their property out there. there there's, it, Naughty, it's a lot, man. A lot going on over here. A lot of little stuff. And a lot of these people I just met with two weeks ago, you know, are sitting here and saying, why am I going to invest back here in the Abaco if, you know, it's it, it's taken all this red tape for me to get approval to bring in. That's what I that's what I've been hearing. Like like that's the biggest thing. I I am stuck here. I got to keep doing what I got to do because I have nowhere to go because of the red tape. I can't do what I normally do back home because I can't get to do it. I think the issue. I mean, if you're looking at it really from sort of a macro sense, the issue here is control, and the fact that Nassau. The government in Nassau controls everything. And there's a feeling, and I, I had a conversation like this last week, there's a feeling that Abaco is getting more than it deserves and that there's people in Abaco and that there's a certain population in Abaco, namely the second homeowners, who really don't deserve to, to, to be able to take advantage of these things. And they're really only meant for Bahamians. And, you know, you can argue back and forth on that, but you've got to realize the second homeowners drive the economy here. So the sooner they get back here, the sooner the Bahamians can benefit from it. And it's not a, it's, a, I, I take a real issue with saying that, you know, people are getting something they don't deserve. This place used to contribute 27% of government revenue with 6% of the population. Okay. We had 26,000 people on this island. We now have about 15. And we can't have any more because there's nowhere for anyone to live. And there's nowhere for anyone to live because we can't get the accommodations. We can't get the investors to come back and, and help us rebuild. Because you don't have basic here. infrastructure. That's why we have the same conversation every two weeks. What has to happen is there has to be a, a mindset change. There has to be a paradigm shift in Nassau to say, okay, Abaco, do what you got to do. We'll call you in a year and a half and see how you're doing. Yeah, I mean, I think basically, you know, what I get from this, and I got to keep beating the dead horse to death, no pun intended, but you all just won't get the red tape out of the way. You'll fix it yourself. You don't need to wait on anything else to get it fixed. You'll fix it once you just get we're the not, red we're light, not the, asking green, the green for light money. to fix it. We're not asking for for any con anything that, it, that we don't already have. We're just saying, let us get on with it. Stay away for a year and a half and then come back and you'll be really happy and surprised at what you find. So I got a text saying, um, Naughty, I need clarification. If the injunction is, is not indefinite, then it, um, it should be lifted. Then the injunction should be lifted. And, uh, and let me just re re reiterate, Ryan, the attorney general, um, that was brought up at our local government conference. And they are getting clear, more clarification on that in regards to how to move forward with that. Because, you know, let's just remember that injunction does stand for shanty towns in Nassau, too, as well as all over the Bahamas. It doesn't just, it's not just here for Abaco, but 
my my whole point of the thing is is that you know every week we say the same thing we're putting all these regulations and restrictions for bahamians but then other people could go ahead and do what they want to do without any recourse or any worry of you know being fined or you know being told to stop work order or anything like that i i i mean I can only try to put myself in, in, in imagine, you know, what, what living there is like. And it gets frustrating because, like I say, you know, if, if I'm prepared to, 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 to handle my situation and, and get my family back in a position to make a living in, in, a, in a beautiful island like Abaco that I call home, then I just want, at some point, like you say, when do Abaconians get the same attention that other groups are getting pertaining to the rebuild, the recovery, and moving forward since? Lordy, look at Ken. Ken can tell you. Look at our port. I mean, you know, and 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 I say this: if if the U.S. had to do an inspection on our port, we'd be shut down in a heartbeat. You know, I mean, it, it, it it's it's still. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's still it, what it was two years ago. Two but, years ago, three, but, almost three now. It's but, in the same state. And and prior to you, I think, but the second biggest. Contributed to the to the bottom line. Yep. I mean, at the end of the day, that's what it is. So why, uh, you know, you can't have a money maker. You sitting idle. That's what I'm trying to say. I mean, it Indigo, makes no Indigo, sense. Indigo, Nor- Nordy, I'll go as far as to say, even right now in our government complex building, which is controlled by the NIB, which National Insurance Board. We have a big mold issue. Rather than after the hurricane, them them addressing the issue and re-gutting all the offices, they didn't do anything. Now, three years later, we have members that are out sick because of black mold that is forming, even in our local government office, the administrator's office, all the offices and throughout most of the buildings were just painted over. They did not change any sheetrock. All that stuff should have been gutted. And the, you know, the government, I mean, we, the government employees are still living in trailers in the parking lot. My God, and I mean, I I, I hate to say it, but it seems like, you know, the, the powers that be got their head in the sand up here in New Providence and just letting it go by on a daily, like, okay, we'll just well, they, turn they on they their head somewhere. Yeah, Hold somewhere, on. maybe they, not they, in the they, sand. They, I agree. They, they, they're in, they're traveling the world. They're not too worried about what's going on in Abaco. But again, you know, they have concerns about climate change and coastal erosion. Well, Here's something that has been directly affected by that last hurricane, which was created by, by major climate change and had an effect on it. I mean, come on, we need, we need to be prepared and we need to, to look at rebuilding Abaco to a way it needs to be to survive. God forbid we have another hurricane down there right now. God forbid. Nordy, don't, don't, don't. Let me say this. I, I don't wish a hurricane on the Bahamas. And I'm not trying to put a mouth on anybody. Let me, God knows. Let me, let me say this. If Nassau was ever hit, with the hurricane, what Abaco was and Dorian, then then you'll see change. I he believe, feels because, knows. Be, <laughs> because too many people will be affected. I got a text to chime in and say, Nordy, I'll say this again. Abaco needs to file for independence from the Bahamas because it's getting annoying hearing these same cries every other week. I mean, and I, and I don't think they're being facetious. I, I'm saying, you know, at some point, you, you got to wonder, like, how long is this going to last? Well, just give, give us what you promised during your campaign. You know? I mean, come on. And where's, where's, you, you where's said, the MPs for all of this down there? Where are they in I'm all not, of this? I, I, I don't know. I I, I don't want to speak know. ill will of, of no MP because I, I don't want to see any government fail. But what I want to see is a government that promised Abaco to let them get what they duly deserve. And quit going back on what you said during your campaign. You know, make it easier for Abaconians to get back on their feet. And then you got your bread and butter back to what you had before. Right now, you can't get blood out of a stone. 
Naughty yeah. gas is going to be eight dollars a gallon. Don't say it, man. It's, it's almost eight dollars here now. To me. Do you realize that that is that is higher than what some people make an hour? That's true. I didn't even look at that. In some cases, that is true. You know, I hate to say it, but in some cases, it, 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 you know, my my whole thing is is this administration needs to get off their butt and finally start doing something for Abaco and Freeport and the places that were affected by Hurricane Dorian and quit lip, lip syncing. You know, and now can say anything. I have to live in Abaco. I'm the one that hears the people struggle. I know what we're doing as a township. I know what we have planned on the horizon. You know, but hey, at some point, central government has to take away this red tape and just say, you know what, Abaco, as Ken said, go for yourself. Go for yourself. You 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 got Pelican Shores that can't even get their road road paid, but then you see in the news new roads in Nassau. My my first question to myself is, wow, they're paving new roads in Nassau and they won't even fix what happened from Hurricane Dorian for residents that living in a devastated area. That that that's just dumbfounding. I got a text to chime in and saying the government needs to take at least a year off of traveling and focus on on the Bahamas and Bahamians first. Yeah, I I, I, I agree. They need to do something. You know, let, let them be the ones that, let their legacy be the ones that, that they brought positive change and they stepped in and gave Abaco what they needed to get Abaco where they need to be. Because at the end of the day, we can't keep having this conversation. And I, I'm looking at the calendar and I'm like, okay, here we go. July 12th, fellas, does that work for you guys? It works. Hey, Ken. In that's a day after the holiday, so that should allow you all to come in, you know, off a good weekend and at least, you know, having something good to eat and a couple of cold brewskies. <laughs> Naughty, look, and you know, we, we said it earlier, you know, 4.1 million in added um, travel expenditure. Ken, do you know what we could do with $4.1 million here in Abaco? We could build that nice hurricane shelter. Or that we could, beautiful we could thing. Build a couple of them for that. Yeah. Plus, we could we could put some uh, multifamily housing back together so that we have some rental accommodations for workers. Think about it, Naughty. Just, I mean, to your listeners, think about that. Four point one million dollars they used for an increased budget for traveling when they could have used that to help benefit people here in Abaco and Grand Bahama. And four point one million could have put up the hurricane and, shelter and housing, but is desperately needed. Right. And they could have been making money off of the rent coming in from the rental units. That's what is so dumbfounding. All right. I got or the, or just get out of the way and let the private sector do it. I got a, I got a question um for you, Ken, real quick, and we got a wrap on this one. And 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 is the twelve good for you guys? The twelfth of July. Good. That's the day after the independence holiday. That's the Tuesday after the Monday holiday. Uh, Ken, I don't good. know if you're going to want to talk to me. Um, the June 30th is my last day as president of the Abaco Chamber. So four years is enough, and it's time for some new blood there. Well, so. I still want to talk to you. You're, you're you know, a slash consultant contributor to Talking Ads. I don't care what your portfolio is. <laughs> All right. All right. So we'll, we'll keep that going. If you want to drag some new people in from, from the chamber that we know them, that's great. But, you know, I, I go in with who I know and what I got. You know, you understand what I'm saying? So I right. value your contribution. So I'd appreciate you continuing to chime in if that's still cool with you. Sure. All right. And um, I appreciate that. Um, here's a quick question for you. Why is Abaco's tax money even coming to Nassau? Shouldn't Abaco's tax money just stay in Abaco to develop Abaco? It, it, unfortunately, our consolidated fund does not allow us yeah. to separate money like that. And, this, and the next text coming in, I swear the Bahamas is a slush fund being... <laughs> Run by educated politicians. <laughs> Texas boy, y'all on we all firing them out today, I swear. But at the end of the day, we we have to get Abaco the attention that we need. So, you know, I, I keep making my noise, fellas. I keep beating up my gums and hopefully we can make it make something happen and get in the right direction. Well, and we really appreciate you uh taking the time to to listen to us and to get the get the story out there because it's it's important. Well, no problem, man. So I will see you guys on the 12th. All right. Regards to everybody in Abaco. And I'm going to start working on maybe doing a show from down there. So maybe on the 12th, 
I might be in your neighborhood and we might just do it live from down there. Let me see if I could work some strings between now and then. Appreciate it. And Naughty, let me just But I can need I can need one I can need one Kong salad, I can need one stew Kong, one stew (laughs) fish, and some cold brewskis. And you know, old number seven need to be close by at some point. (laughs) You all go ahead and work that out and I'll see you all soon. We'll take a break. Thank you, my friend. No problem, man. I want to thank Roscoe and Ken for chiming in. And as always, Abaco, we're going to keep praying for you and keep beating up our guns till you get where you need to be. Quick commercial break. On the flip side of the break, we're going to talk sports right here on Talking Heads, Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Earl the Pearl is in the building coming up after the break. Wait till I tell Earl he got a fan base. Dear God. Mr. Producer be in trouble, but Earl got fans. People hitting me, where's Earl the Pearl? Anyway, let's go to the break. Naughty Johnny's Restaurant can only be described as the experience you want to recreate again and again and again. Their motto is simple food done well. You're welcome into their home at Naughty Johnny's where you can dine on crack conk, conk fritters, and other Bahamian favorites. There's also an international flair that's guaranteed to offer something for everyone. Enjoy a good meal and listen to live band on their patio Friday and Saturday night or brunch on Saturday and Sunday only at Naughty Johnny's Restaurant in the Old Town Plaza, Old Fort. They're open 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Monday through Thursday, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Friday, 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. on Saturday, and 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. on Sunday. Naughty Johnny's. Well, what the truth? George, shoes and accessories is your one-stop shop for all your footwear needs. Whatever the occasion, John's is confident you will find what you're looking for. Among our always growing collection of amazing and trendy styles. We cover women, men, children, the whole family. Together with John's great prices and helpful and friendly customer service, your experience in shopping with us will be time well spent. Too busy to come in store? Shop with us online. www.johnshoes.com John's also now carries small home appliances. So come on in today at John's, where we put fashion at your feet. When I had got prostate cancer, my family didn't know if I was going to live at Cancer Treatment Center of America. Within days, I got an appointment. They presented me with treatment options, and they set up a robotic prostatectomy. When my scans came back, there are no signs of cancer. They don't see you as a number. They see you as a part of family. I'm going on with my life. That's a real gift. Call us at Cancer Treatment Centers of America. Hey, Dumps. The boys, them going on a bad trip, dog. Partying and hanging on the family island. It's a lie. Are you telling you, Dumps? Hey, but since only enough money for one plane ticket, one of us got to fit in that bag. That look is fit inside the bag, then, T. Well, I was thinking with the perpendicularity of the bag and the spatial structure of your body, you could have just hop in it right quick. But T. I know Dubs, it's kind of small, but I can slap on handle with care stick on the wire. No, T. I'm trying to tell you, the promotion says two fly free. That means two people could go. Two? Two. I told it. <laughs> I can take this girl, eh? <laughs> Grab your friends and head to the Family Islands. With the two fly free campaign, there's no better time than now. Go to BahamasResidence.com for more information. Hello? Can you show you something else, boy? Who this is? Tamika? You don't even remember my name? Wow, Dred. Girl, I've been so busy. You still planning your trip? Girl, and I can't wait. I right here online booking my car. You dare planning trip. You vaccinated? Girl, we had to. We ain't been nowhere since this pandemic started. Girl, let me get a 14-day vacation. Best vacation ever. <laughs> Girl, are you know? Well, I know you was gonna get the vaccine, because you too like travel. When y'all get your vaccine? Girl, long time. Because you got to get your first dose, wait, then get your second dose at least two weeks before you travel. Johnny get his vaccine and he's 12. Even Grammy get hers. <laughs> Child and Grammy say she ain't get no money. But I say I hide none under the mattress. Child, let me send my list because I know you're going shopping. He should don't play with me. Vaccinate today, live tomorrow. A message by Paho WHO, Canada and USAID. Let Duncan put the good back into morning with our delicious breakfast sandwiches. Enjoy a fluffy egg topped with American cheese and bacon, ham, or savory sausage on your choice of a flaky croissant, a warm bagel, or a toasted English muffin. Choose your favorite and have breakfast just the way you like it. 
Make it a combo with golden hash browns and a freshly brewed coffee. And get rising and shining with Dunkin' Breakfast Sandwiches today. The Bahamas runs on Dunkin'. Talking Heads, Guardian Radio, 96.9 FM, continues right now. And we're up in the 5 o'clock hour, 5.32 is the time. And I got Earl the Pearl chiming in. Pearly, what's good, man? Man, it's good. It's all good. I, I always good. appreciate your patience on, on an abaco so edition. Because, you know, we go a little extra with the Abaconians, man. So, you know, I appreciate your, your you patience. Know, and all. Extra, I know, I know. I like abaco, though. I like uh, North abaco. My shop, I like abaco. That's a good spot, man. Maybe we need to take the oh, show yeah. there for the 12th, man. Maybe we need to go to Abaco for the day and do the show. I, I'm with you. Let's make, let's make it happen. But um, I can drive a life the I know you go now. You vaccinated <laughs> and ready to go. We got to jump straight into it, man. Today is Monday. And I got and I got visa. And I got visa. <laughs> we say. All right. Yeah. Stop it. I hope it's that one you can charge on. Got to. <laughs> All right. You be short, people. All right. Here we go. Monday, June 27th is today's date, obviously, 2022. But uh, today in sports history, all brought to you, of course, by Naughty Johnny's. Well, weather trip out there to the old Fort Chopping Plaza. Monday through Friday, great for lunch and dinner. Then on the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, great for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And don't forget happy hours every Wednesday and Friday, 5 to 7 p.m. at Naughty Johnny's. Give them a call. See what that businessman's lunch special is each and every day of the week. 377-7776. 377-7776. Well, weather trip out there to the old Fort Chopping Plaza. All right, they're definitely going to hook you up. It's all good. All right, here we go. 1876, Dave Forrest of the Philadelphia Athletics became the first National League player to get six hits in a nine-inning game. 1939, Cleveland's Municipal Stadium hosted its first night game. Indians beat the Tigers 5 to nothing. 1972, Bobby Hull signed a 10-year hockey contract for $2,500. Sorry, 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 <laughs> sorry. No, no, $250,000. Sorry, I got my decimal point wrong. I, I remember that sign. I know it was 250000 but in 72, 250000 was like astronomical money. He for beca- hockey. He became a player and coach for the Winnipeg Jets of the World Hockey Association. 1986, yeah. Ann White. I think he was about 90. I think he was about 90 when he retired. I'm so honest. He was about 50 when he retired, wasn't he? Yeah. When he stopped playing. Yeah, he was up yeah. there. Listen, though, I remember this yeah. one from 86, Earl. You remember this one? From 86, Ann White wore only a body stocking at Wimbledon. You remember it? It was like the unitar, just a whole body stocking. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. I remember yeah. that. Yeah, I mean, she, yes. was, she was like, like a, you know, a precursor for what we see today with some of these outfits, you know? Yes. Yes, I remember that. And that's yeah. why I like to say that that, that, that kind of material in spandex is, is, can be a lie sometimes, you know? It's not utterly true. <laughs> What else, Nine, say something 1986, crazy. Robbie Thompson. Remember, Robbie was a good little second baseman and shortstop for the San Francisco Giants. He was caught stealing yeah. bases four times in one game. Remember that? He got caught four times in one game. Yeah, anything go by with the Giants, I remember. <laughs> yeah, he tried to steal bases four times, got thrown out going to second twice and going to third twice. Well, third once and home once. 1988. In Atlantic City, Mike Tyson knocked out Michael Spinks in 91 seconds. I remember that fight. I watched I, that, I fight. Watched that fight. Michael yeah, Spinks was scared. He peed down his leg before he came into the ring. He was so scared in that locker room. I mean, Tyson just came right out and boom, boom, boom. I was like, oh, my God. And it was God. over. I mean, I remember that. nasty. I remember that. But Tyson walked through. He wasn't the only one. Tyson walked through plenty of them like that. For real. And Buster Douglas walked through Tyson. Uh, uh, okay, yeah, he did. He caught him. He caught him, Merle. I'll never forget that night either. I was at a wedding reception in Florida. One of my friends got married, and we there having cocktails, and he come over, but he faced down to the ground. I thought he'd say, no, okay, my my wife, she ready to leave me, and we only been married a couple hours. He all missed the eye. I think he get an emotional because of the wedding. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. ready to cry because Mike Tyson just got knocked the hell out by Buster Douglas. <laughs> James Buster Douglas. 
So no matter, it was embarrassing, man. Coño, man, he was all in the ring, you know, because he's Cuban-American, right? Coño, man, he was in the ring looking for the mouthpiece. How embarrassing, man, man. How embarrassing. That, that, oh, my God. You, oh, he's a legend. And, he's not, and he was just all upset and in his moment. And then, you know, we just started jinxing after that. I know that. We know, just started that, jinxing him right up after that because now, you know, he had buttons to push. But I remember that though. Nobody really thought that was gonna happen. But 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 um. Oh, I I I didn't see it coming. Yeah, I never thought I would come in either. But boy, that shocked the heck out of me. 1980, Jose Canseco signed a contract with the Oakland A's worth four million seven hundred thousand per year, four point seven million. And back in 1990, that was crazy money. That was good money. That was one of the, that was a big contract at the time. Now today, that's that's somebody paycheck for the week. That's me. <laughs> That's mid. That's mid. That's rook. That, hey, rook. No rookies get seven hundred thousand. That's like thirty years. Yeah, yeah, they got a little change. Or, or decline in players' time a little four million yeah. dollar contract to go pitch, to pitch two minutes for the Dodgers or the Yankees. You got it. The Boston Red yeah. Sox in two thousand and four. The Red Sox scored ten runs before making an out against the Florida Marlins. The final score was twenty five to eight. And then um. In today's sports quote, when I hit a ball, I want some else, uh, someone else to go chase it. Roger Hornsby, St. Louis Cardinals. He's an infielder who said that's why he chose yeah. baseball over golf. Okay, okay. But I'd rather somebody go chase my ball than me have to go walk after it. That's kind of funny, though. Yeah, that, I like that. <laughs> you know? So what's it with so, so who's in? Who's in? Who's up? Yeah, who's we got we, we got to slide into that. You always like to go into who's in the news out, man. But, but that comes next, man. You always get the second hitter in the lineup wrong, man. It's the home court. Then who's in? Who's out? Home court by my BK. Second hit, my second hit in the lineup last night was good. We'll talk oh, about that later. God, why did I set? Oh, I set myself up. <laughs> he, he, they were good last night, Earl. They were good. All right, that's a wrap on today in sports history. All brought to you across by Naughty Johnny's. Let's get up into the home court. All brought to you, of course, by BK, Burger King, Nassau, and it's all about the Zesty Whopper. Brand new. You need to check it out. Get it uh, by itself. Get it as a combo. Saucy, crunchy, and full of flavor. Flame grilled beef, crispy chicken, or plant-based. Waiting on you at your favorite Burger King location for takeout, drive through and delivery with the Craven app. All right. Super. Earl, who is in and who's out? Hey. I'll tell you who was in, and I'm not trying to pick on nobody. I swear to goodness I'm not. But I got to ask myself, why were all our top athletes when it comes to track and field in town, in the stadium, but no stadium fans was out? Like they was running in an empty stadium. I thought they was running at the Bahama Bowl. You and I, you and I spoke about that, right? Man, oh man. We spoke about that and we said that we didn't hear anything much about it. And the, the certain people decided that they promoted it, they promoted it, promoted it. So, you know, I saw clips from the Jamaican ones. That you Anyway, I ain't going to talk about it. Listen. Ah. Boy. Listen. We're in. We, got, yeah. we, got, we got some tremendous performances. I think we got uh, the, uh, congratulations to Devin Charles, who set a new national record in the hurdle. All right. Um, um, but people didn't come out to see it. And I'm I'm guilty of that. But I, I honestly had already plans for the weekend and didn't even know, realize that. The, and I, I should remember that the, the, the last weekend in, 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 in June is always the Nationals. But I had other plans. So I tried to keep in contact to see what was going on. But it's hard to say. At the end of the day, Pearly, we have the world-class athletes that we have in, in the likes of, of yeah. Sean A., Stevie, Johnny Devin Charlton, um, um, Anthony Strong, who's making a comeback and doing well, you know, off of injury, you know, after having nagging injuries most of her career. You got uh, the young man who throws a javelin. Oh, what's his name? Off to you, Auburn you on the scholarship. Like, this is, this they should have been there, and, I, and we should have had every yeah. young person that we could have gotten to that stadium, watching those races, seeing them up close and personal, having a moment. Because there are athletes, there are world when you champions. Really about it, when you really think about it, this is the one, probably the only meet, out, out, what the only meet to be sure that all of our athletes will attend because it is mandatory if you want to be on the world, on the Olympic or the world championship team, it's mandatory that you participate there. So it's 
it, it, I, I feel bad for not being there, but I feel bad for, 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 for all of us for not being there. So we, we need to next year do some things to make sure it's there, it, it, you know, the people out there we, watch we, these athletes run. I mean, it's one thing to sit there and say, but I'm not a fan of this. I'm not a fan of that. Listen, we got the opportunity with all world-class athletes to be in that stadium. Then we need to fill it to capacity with Bahamians and the young athletes especially to see them up close and personal. Same thing with the Bahama Bowl. Same thing with Battle for Atlantis. Same thing with all of that. Because there's opportunity. Running, so that's the bottom line. We huh? like running. So when we like running, we can go see running. I just said it like that. You know, I'm, I'm saying it in not vernacular, but we like... Damon generally like track and field, and Damon like running. So we, can, I think, there's some reason why we're not coming out, and we got to figure out a way to get Damon to want to come back out to watch the pieces. But listen, growing up, and you could get the Thomas A. Robinson Track and Field Stadium. You could get there. Ah. I'm telling you, man. Let, let's go to the phone lines real quick, or the pearl. Talking Heads, Guardian Radio, ninety six point nine FM. Who's this? Hey, this is Gardner again. Hey, what's going on, Big G? What's happening, Gardner? Yeah. So, did, did you say uh, uh, Tony and and Gardner didn't show up and didn't come. No, 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 no. I said they were here, Gardner. I said the fans didn't show up. The athletes were in the house. The fans were not. And we got we got Sean A. We got Stephen Gardner. We got Devin Charlton. We got several other you know of our world class athletes here performing because they got to be here, like like Earl said, like Pearlie said. And we didn't take advantage of it. We dropped the ball. It was not from, in my opinion. It was not promoted correctly. Right. I tried I tried to find them on YouTube and couldn't find nothing. No race. Not a one. I guess the world know that 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 who the team are and you know, and who 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 the who the, the medalist will be the uh, the potential mm-hmm. being God the for, for future God enough for future reference. When you want to watch anything you track and field, ten years seniors go to that Facebook page and they can they guide you in the right Yeah, direction. big up the big up to Ronaldo Dorset and uh, Mr. Mark Nutt over there yeah. at Ten Year Seniors, man. That's my boys them. They 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 good they, friends. They, they everything when it comes to track and field, but no, but like, it, I don't particularly do the when it comes to track thing, you know, but, you know, like I say, I go on YouTube and I I get I find all the other But when you go to YouTube, Gardner, you know, type in ten year seniors Gardner, one second, type in ten year seniors on YouTube. They got a YouTube channel. It'll be there. You can find type it there as well. What? Ten year seniors, tenth year seniors. Tenth year. Yeah, tenth year. One zero T H tenth year Y E A R seniors S E N I O R S. All right. So, so how was the competition for 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 the uh, like Tony, not Tony, uh, uh, Antoinette uh, and and Charlton and and Stephen? How Ch- was it? Did Charlton, they blow the field? Or Charlton won her event. I know Sean A was in her event and did well. Gardner did well in his. Yeah, they they were. They you all know, blew out their their competitors. They were, they were right? top did class. They? they were top class. They blew them out. You could say. Yeah. Well. I'm trying to be diplomatic, but you could say, yeah, you could say it. <laughs> you're, you're, try, you're trying to be diplomatic. <laughs> no, this keyword, keyword, trying, trying. <laughs> so, so, so goes back to, to 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 my sentiments. You know, we we in we in trouble with with the track and field. You know, we in trouble with it. You know, the sport that we that we promote so much, and you know, it's like people they like they 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 turn a deaf eye. You know, <laughs> a deaf ear. But get your questions together, because on Thursday from 5 to 6, our special guest on Talking Heads is going to be the Minister of Youth Sports and Culture, Mr. Mario Boleg. But, but, but you, know, you know, for, uh, they need to invest in the schools, you know, especially, for, you know, it's got the foundation of the schools, not the private clubs. Right. You know, the private clubs are senior athletes, not the junior athletes, you know, not the foundation. I, I agree with you there. We, we got to get more of them. They don't train here, so we don't have a, you know what I'm saying, we don't have a private uh, institution for our senior athletes, you know. Right. So we we got an issue, bro. We got to spread it around. We got to spread it around, man. Yeah, we we got to take take them to the high schools, you know. We got we to gotta go to the high schools, build, you know, build the facilities, you know. We, you know, one, one track or two tracks for, for all the athletes in NASA alone, that's not sufficient. Right, I, I agree. We need more facilities, and we need more to... More facilities in all sports. Because we do have the talent. I think we have the talent that we can tap into, but we do need yeah, to, we, to, we to eat, harness eat, it correctly. We got all the food. <laughs> 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 we the biggest people in the region. <laughs> My God, no, you're easy, man. Anyway, we got to get to the break. We got to get to the break, man. I always appreciate okay, you chiming in. Be safe. Enjoy your, enjoy your Monday, yeah. man. Yeah. 
Purdy, we got to get to the break. On the flip side of the break, guess what, Purdy? We wrapping up, you know, the home court. And guess what we getting into? Your favorite segment. Who's in and who's out? All brought to you, of course, by okay. Tropical Gyros. We got to talk some Major okay. League Baseball. We got to talk some NFL. We got to talk some NBA real quick before we wrap it up. And, yeah, um, I, 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 I tell you, boy, MJ did, did the thing today. She was running errands today. Man, she come home. She had Tropical Gyros. I can tell you where to lie. Chef Kami, you done it again. You done it again. Earl, I got you. I will personally pick you up and take you tomorrow. I ain't even eat none because I still food from the day. I can pick you up and I can carry you tomorrow, Purdy. I swear to God. I, I, listen, one thing. If, if I was a little gal, if I know you would have been like this, some swinging words you'd be throwing at me all the time. Why? I, 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 right? That's how you could do me? Go to the break, mister. That's how you could do me, Pearly. That's how you could do me? <laughs> Pearly, that, you going there? Take me to the break, man. My friends like you who needs animals. <laughs> The King wants you to take a walk on the tangy side with the all-new Zesty Whopper collection at Burger King Nassau. Enjoy the classic Zesty Whopper with two types of cheese, zesty sauce, and crispy onions stacked on 100% flame-grilled beef. Or go zesty on our plant-based Whopper and crispy chicken. All three are saucy, crunchy, and full of flavor and only available at Burger King Nassau. Visit any of our seven locations and enjoy a Zesty Whopper as a combo or as part of the King's Feast at Burger King Nassau, where taste is king. With fine style, with elegant taste, then fine threads is your place. If you want those slots hemmed or just taking the waist, then fine threads is your place. If you want to look suave and debonair everywhere you go, like you're supposed to be in a video. Want to step out and look great, then fine threads is your place. With fine style, with elegant taste, then fine threads is your place. Is your place. Is your place. We're good for you. We know how important collecting your money can be to the success of your business. Start your relationship with Fidelity today so that we can show you the many options available to you with our merchant services. From click and pay options online to merchant terminals and e-commerce options. We're here to help your business succeed. For more details, speak to one of our business development officers at 356-7764 in Nassau or 352-6676 in Freeport. Visit our website at fidelitygroup.com or visit any of our branches. That's right, boys and girls, get ready to play basketball at the 34th Annual Jeff Rogers Basketball Camp, July 4th through July 29th at the Kendall G.L. Isaacs Gym, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. daily. So parents, get your boys and girls ages 5 through 18 registered now. Applications available at the South Bahamas Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, Tonic Williams Darling Highway, and at the registration desk at Campsite Kendall G.L. Isaacs Gym. Special appearances by NBA players, legends, and coaches. So get your boys and girls registered now, ages 5 through 18, for the 34th Annual Jeff Rogers Basketball Camp, July 4th through July 29th. Need to satisfy your late night munchies? KFC drive throughs are open and frying until midnight every night of the week. Whether you're craving juicy KFC chicken, fries and biscuit, or one of our signature KFC sandwiches, we've got you covered with 100% KFC flavor. Catch some late night vibes and take a ride to your neighborhood KFC for after dark satisfaction. Last call to get fueled by KFC fried chicken is midnight. Late night cravings at KFC Nassau. It's finger licking good. Talking Heads, Guardian Radio 96.9 FM continues right now. 5.52 p.m. is the time, and down the home stretch we come. And uh, real quick, man, 
Got to look at uh, what's on tap tonight there, Pearly. And uh, Major League Baseball, who you like tonight, man? Which who, who, Who's the big games to keep the eye on tonight there, Earl the Pearl? My resident that, 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 baseball that, that, guru. 840, that 840 game where the Dodgers will be in Colorado, where we can be teeing off the ball in, in fields where the ball don't travel well. How you think we can do in Colorado? And I like Oakland. I, I like the game. With, oh, speaking of Oakland, who's at the Yankees today? Speaking of who's in and who's out, Oakland is actually out. I understand the Oakland Athletics would be following the Oakland Raiders to Vegas. What? And I understand that Major League Baseball will not will not uh, charge the athlete at the Oakland a relocation fee because they actually want a team in Vegas. Wow, the Raiders, formerly the Raiders, and now the A's moving to Vegas. Wow. That, that, that's the dog. That's right now. big. That that and that, that instantly that, that instantly puts the A's from being like a small, a mid-market to small market franchise to now being able to, to put themselves in a position to become a, a player in the game. Because Vegas is a huge yeah, untapped market. They, they look to be sellers and the next month is the trade deadline. And, um, and you know they've they always done a, a good job buyer. of making chicken salad out of chicken crap, like I say, so you never know. With some more money in the future in Vegas, they might be able yeah. to do a few things. I, I like yeah. that Oakland-New York game, like you said. I also like Boston at Toronto. I think that's jump side, and that's a pretty decent game right there. Oh, yeah. Miami at, at St. Louis. I like that one. You guys. The Guardians is a good game because the Guardians hot. You guys at Colorado as well as a good game. The Guardians, yeah, that, 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 that Minnesota and, and, and Cleveland game is a good one in the AL Central. So you got some good games to watch tonight. And as a matter of fact, what, what I you like. Pardon? Did you see the big fight between the, the Mariners and, and um, nine, the other team in LA? Nine big games tonight on top. The Mariners take on Baltimore tonight at 10 10, but. Will they be without players after that fight? So obviously there was a scrap over last night. Yeah, looking for the suspensions now because mostly with five players on each side got uh, ejected. Mariners and Angels had a brawl. I, I, don't even, I didn't even have to type up just like, like all I had to do is type in M-A-R and it, and it just came up. Angels, Mariners fight. And these guys yeah, look big like... Fight today. Big they fight in Big fight in Bandana. Yeah, man. Yeah, and, and when they say full brawl, obviously they mean full brawl. There's the hit batter. It looks like he was intentionally hit. He yep. started out words. The, the, pitcher, they called, the, the pitcher was the hired gun for that night because of their attention. Up the right. Night now. And, then, and then the catcher's trying to block him from getting to the pitcher. And yep. now, now the batter just goes crazy. The bench is clear yep. and it's on and popping. Yep. Purple rushes red, red like rushes purple, and dudes throwing blows and punches. But even after the fight, fellas took the garbage in and take control of yeah, the Yeah, 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 yeah. But there was one who braced one with, with, with the plastic Gatorade bottle, too. That, I, I made sure we don't have a Bahamian in baseball in Seattle, but we didn't know about. <laughs> but this was a good fight for real. There's always one or two this, juicy baseball fights, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is one of the, I think this is probably the, the, the worst one in a little while. We got nine big games on top there tonight, so it's a lot of good things to watch there. A brief scan of the NFL will reveal. No, 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 no. Don't go running fast. No, 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 hold on. Let's slow back up. Please stop talking MLB. Okay. Hold on. What hold you, on, man. What you got? What you got? I, I can say this. I, I, I called the tease you saw today when you guys got no hit. Yes, we got no hit. And what was my, what was my, what was my no, statement? Hold on, no, hold, on. hold on. Hold on. And then I said, when I look, I was watching, just monitoring the game. And up until the seven, and you guys would get no hit again. And then the man who y'all get $19 million to has to come through again in the clutch. Y'all got to pay that man big money come end of the season. Like I told hey, you, Judge. like I told you, okay? When we got hit, no hit the other day. But it was impressive that they came what, back. What was my, what was my no statement? What was my statement? Ahead, my statement was, my comments matched the amount of hits that the Yankees had in the game today. None. I couldn't say nothing. You had no head. I got to shut okay. up and take it. And then what was impressive with me is Freddie Freeman went back in Atlanta Friday night. That was awesome. I, I ain't going to lie to you. I had a moment, a little tear jerk moment when I saw it too. I ain't going to yeah, lie. One, one, or two, one or two missed it up in the left eyeball. I ain't going to lie. Yeah, yeah. And, and Freddie was touched. 
And you can see Freddie was touched. Yeah. Then Saturday, fellas, them handcuffers, Henley coming, Jensen coming there and bringing strike out the side Saturday night. I was pissed because, you know, my son is a big, brave fan, so I had to hear that. Yeah. Yesterday, yesterday, they leave us 2 nothing, two out, two strikes. Jensen had on my on on um, on um, um, Will Smith base it Taylor base it the Bahamian boy base it next thing look the game tied oh oh now had, now Trace Trace Thompson is the Bahamian boy but, hey listen the brother trying to keep the brother the brother trying to make sure Eddie Rios can be in problems the Bahamian boy named Jazz and he plays in Miami. I know. I should say the, the, the behemoth descent, descendants, the behemoth descendants. Yes. Uh, anyway, get your last one in. Get your last one in. Burley. Get it in. Good, because my producer giving me the thumbs up. We got to get to the news. So, what you got good before we get out of here? So, I just tonight, uh, oh, um, Malik Monk said he's willing to take the veterans minimum of $6.4 million and come back to the Lakers. So, I hear. And Kyrie Irving said he will, and the, 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 the rumor is that Kyrie Irving was considering taking the the, the, the the veteran minimum of six million to go join the Lakers. What? What? <laughs> what Rob Palinka is be offering these dudes, man? <laughs> what kind of what, what he's be how he's be entertaining them? I could get Malik Monk one to stay there. You know, I had a good year after Roth started in, in Charlotte. I like being in LA. I could make some endorsement deals or whatever. But for Kyrie Irving to say he could play for the veterans minimum to come play in LA, well, Rob, I, I'm starting to pack my bags in Memphis right now. Purdy, can you hear me coming I, back to LA? Send your application for me. You, what, you can email what, it. What application? <laughs> No application. I show back up like the prodigal son. I've returned. You, you want me to? You gotta start eating Roscoe's chicken and waffles no, 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 too. No, 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 no. You have to be. You have to go to a vetting. You have to be interviewed. Vetting you who? Have to be, you have to. You have to kiss the ring again. Only ring I can kiss is one ring. All right, and, and that's the ring. Um, in the head office, in the box that was last worn by Dr. Jerry Buss, who gave me my credentials, who supersedes anything that runs LA right now. And Jeannie knows she's still in my doghouse for putting LeBron over Jerry West on the top five of Lakers all the time. So come on now. Maybe some other people. You you know I just could show up now. Okay? Yeah. Tell me how it's looking in L.A., man. I might have to make a comeback if Kyrie. I have Kyrie there. You know, he's, he's rolling LeBron out. He's like the sage for LeBron, you know? Posted. We'll, we'll see you tomorrow, man. Enjoy your dodgy game, man. For everybody who chimed in and our guests from Mabaco and Earl Pearl, this your boy Naughty. For my producer extraordinary, we up out here. Have a great night, Bahamas. Be good. And if you can't be good, be good at it. we we'll see you tomorrow.